Hello, and welcome to AWS Glue Studio Learning Series Part 2. My name is Harsha Kadiparthi, and I'm a specialist senior solutions architect covering analytics at Amazon Web Services. During part one of this series, you have learned the fundamentals of AWS Glue Studio and how to visually author ETL jobs without writing any code. Today, you're going to learn how to author complex ETL jobs using Glue Studio. Let me remind you that this is a three-part series where part three helps you develop streaming ETL jobs using Glue Studio. 70%, take a moment to think about what it represents and how big it is. It is the percentage of ETL jobs that are hand-coded without using ETL tools. Well, we see that actually it's over 90% in the cloud. Why do you think that 70% of ETL jobs are hand-coded? It is because it empowers the developers to perform complex data operations. Glue Studio is built to continue empowering the developers by providing a hybrid development experience where the developers can use the best of both from visually authoring part of their job without writing any code to writing handwritten code for complex transformations where necessary. I just wanted to highlight some of the complexities ETL developers see in their day-to-day -day development, like extracting data from various sources, uh, building UDFs to perform certain functions uh, that can be repetitive or passing certain dynamic values, et cetera. Uh, string operations for find replace or regex type operations, um, lots of multi-way joins, uh, and hash operations, for example, um, encrypting a particular column values or uniquely identifying a, a specific row when there's no natural key, et cetera, right? Um, you know, many, many more. Let's take a demo scenario to learn how a developer can use Glue Studio's hybrid development framework to mask a couple sensitive columns in a customer table as seen in the screenshot on the left. The last name and the first name column in the customer table are the ones that the developer chooses to mask. There are several data masking techniques available, but the developer chooses to use a couple of those for, the, for this demo. The last name column is masked using a hash key algorithm and the first name column is masked with a static value, star, 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 fn, star, star, star. During the second part of the demo, the developer builds a flattened customer denom table using the masked customer table, customer address, and demographic tables. During this demo, you will see how the developer switches between Visual Studio and handwritten code to use the best of both while performing the five complex operations that are highlighted in yellow. So with no further delay, let's jump right into the demo. Right, so before going into the Glue Studio, let's take a look at the source tables used for this demo. We're going to use the customer table, customer address, and the demographic table, which are all the standard uh, three terabyte TPCDS datasets. And these are pre-crawled for this demo and located in the Glue catalog under the name uh, DemoDB. So, um, and another thing I'd like to also point out is, and you can see this first uh, name and last name sensitive columns with all the values populated in the customer table. So now let's switch to the Glue Studio. So here is a Glue landing page, and I'm already logged in as my ID, Harsha Tu. And um, let's go ahead and author the job by clicking on blank graph to create an empty canvas. Let's give it a name. I'll say demo-0228. As we need to mask sensitive columns for the customer table, we need to first add the customer table as a source. So we, we'll do that by clicking the plus button, and we'll name it uh, as source stash customer and this will be my customer table and we've already seen it under the data catalog in demo db database and select the customer table 
So now we have the source, the customer table, and then the next thing to do is to actually perform the transformation to do the data masking. Given the fact there is no predefined function in Glue that helps you mask the data, so we're gonna basically create a handwritten code that actually performs the transformation. So for that, I'm gonna click this button to add a custom transform. So I'm going to say, this is a custom transformation. Transform for masking. And the node type will be a custom transform that's actually going to help you write a code. So we'll select the source, which is the customer source, which feeds the data into the custom transform. And now we we'll click the transform tab to actually begin writing the custom code. So here I've already pre-created a code, which I'm gonna copy from another window and paste it here. One important thing to understand is a custom transform takes input as a dynamic frame collection and also outputs a dynamic frame collection. What is a dynamic frame collection, right? It is a dictionary of dynamic frame class objects in which the keys are names of the dynamic frames and values are the dynamic frame objects. In other words, the keys, as you call key zero, key one, key two, it's basically as simple as an array of dynamic frames. That's as simple as it. And, and we only have one source, so you see key zero, but in reality, there can be three or four different sources that you may have, which all could be feeding the data into the custom transform. Let me quickly walk you through high level what this transform code is doing. I highly encourage you to use the GitHub link at the bottom of this video and read the comments to follow along what each step is doing. So here is the Python function that's basically performing a hash 256 encoding for last name column. We then converted the function into a Spark UDF, then created a derived column for encrypted last names. Now that the encrypted last names uh, column is created, we then go ahead and drop the uh, actual uh, sensitive last name column. We then use the resulting data frame and uh, create a temp table uh, to leverage the power of Spark SQL. And using Spark SQL, removed all the rows uh, in preparation to mask the first name column. Just removed all the nodes that has null, uh, or all the rows that has null values. And then finally, replaced all the first name columns with uh, static uh, static value star ff uh, star 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 fn star star star. And um, and then the last thing which is the most important thing is to convert the uh, dynamic data frame, Spark data frame into a dynamic frame, and also converting it back into an array of uh, dynamic frame collection. At this point, we have completed the transformation required to mask last name and first name columns from the customer table, and the resulting output is a dynamic frames uh, array. Let's name the output node masked customer. Because we only had one dynamic frame in the last step of the transform, we only see one array element, which is of value zero. So we'll select that key zero. Now that we have our encrypted customer table, the next part of the job is to join it with the customer address and demographic tables, which are also in the Glue catalog, to flatten them out. We're going to hit the plus button to add a new source for the customer address table. We're going to name it source-c address. It's of type S3 and uh, the catalog is already in the demo db database and select the table customer address so at this point we have the masked customer table and the customer 
address table. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and add a join transform to flatten these two tables out. So I'm going to say the name as join customer dash customer address and the node type is a join transform and join requires two tables. So customer add uh, mask customer table is one. And then we'll add the second one, which is the customer address source. So now that we have two tables, let's add a left join between the two and um, the inside the keys. So we have the customer address key here and we'll select the same key. So at this point, we have the customer customer address key. So now let's go ahead and add the third source, which is our demographic source. I'm going to call it as source demographic. And this is of type S3 and the catalog is again the same demo DB database, customer demographic, that's where it is. So now we have the flattened customer address table, customer table, and now we need to add the demographic table in, a, in, a, in another join. So we're going to select another transform and this will be a join between CCA and um, customer demographic. The node type will be a join transform and I'm going to select another left join obviously, uh, but requires two tables. So let's select the second source, which is the customer demographic. And here it will be the left join and we'll add the join keys, Demogra customer demographic, and then the same key demographic. So at this point, we have the flattened table and um, let's persist this to S3 and create a catalog table on top of that so we can query. So I'm gonna create a plus sign, uh, add a plus sign to add a node and we'll call it a target flatten node. And this time I'm gonna select a target which will be of S3. And here the node parent is just the transformed, um, transformed parent. And uh, the format, I'm gonna select blue parquet and a, with snappy compression. And here I wanna create a new table in my glue catalog and we'll give the name of the table. So I, I need it in the demo DB database. And then I'm gonna say demo dash encrypted dash go to 28. All right, so at this point, my table is fully created and I can actually go ahead and look at the script here. This job runs for about six minutes. We can look at the monitoring tab, just to look at the job that has pre previously run. And, um, and this is a job that was previously run successfully which ran for six minutes. So at this point, we let's take a quick look at the table, this table that it created, encrypted customer DNON. So I'm gonna do a preview table. And this will be a flattened table with the encrypted um, first name or, or mask, the first name and last name column. So here is the last name column, which is a derived ENC last name. And the actual last name has been dropped. So these are the encrypted hash encrypted values. And here is the first name column, which has um, all of the values as uh, star, 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 and star, star, star. And then customer address table, that's also flattened out as well as um, the customer demographic. Well, let's, there you go. So the customer demographic table is also here, the marital status, gender, et cetera. So in this demo, You've seen how a developer can use complex ETL operations or functions and, and use the best of both, uh, writing handwritten code where necessary and then using the configuration approach um, to, to again, bring the best of both worlds. So let's do a quick recap. You've learned Glue Studio is designed to empower the developers with a hybrid development framework. You also learn how Glue Studio enables developers to develop any complex ETL job. And finally, the demo helped you learn how Glue Studio's custom transform feature helps write code transformations using Scala or PySpark code. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next video where you will learn how to build a streaming job using Glue Studio.